All right, hello everyone. So I want to talk about Discard Tech before I talk about this character first. Discard Tech has existed for quite a while, but it has not really seen much uh, significant use until now. So what this means, right, is a Discard Tech is such that you can actually maintain your insight at a really high level for a very long time, as long as you keep guarding your bottom skill. So let's say we want to get our highest insight right now. Uh, in my hand, I have a skill 1 and I have a skill 2. So I want to get insight 2 to buff up my Honglu skills. So I use my first skill here. My first skill will discard my second skill, which means my insight will be at 2. Okay, so now we have insight 2. So let's say I just want to keep inside 2, right? I don't want to discard anything else. Then what I want to do here is I actually want to guard. Because if I guard, what happens is that these two skills here cannot be discarded. Meaning that if I were to just unleash this right now, this skill here would try to discard this, but it can't because this skill is being used. Which means that I will maintain inside 2 even though I am using this skill that discards highest rank and this skill does not discard. So I'm going to maintain uh, two insight throughout this entire fight now. As you can see, it did not change. So this tech here, basically, right, is just how to maintain high insight on your character without losing it. Which means that the optimal turn one for Hong Lu, right? Is something like this. Where you see on the third row, there's a skill two and a skill three. Then what you want to do, right? Is you want to immediately discard your skill three. And then for the rest of the game, all you do, right? Is just guard the bottom row. So this is the discard tech. And it's quite important to maintaining your insight at the highest level so that you will be able to get benefits such as the coin power equals to plus insight. So that one is really really important for you to learn and that's pretty much what this uh, starting part is supposed to show you that you can maintain insight tree throughout the whole fight with just Honglu. Alright so now that you know the tech of keeping your insight at level 3 let's talk about Yi Sung and Hong Lu now. Uh, Yi Sung in my opinion is not going to be a very good character. Uh, first of all a lot of people have already said you replace this Dichi with Spice Bush. Right, so unfortunately, because this is a Yi Sang character, it's just unfortunate. You are not sacrificing your Spice Bush for this guy, right? And it's even more apparent when you look at the kit of the character. So first off, let's look at coins, right? It's 3 plus 4 plus 4, 11 average. 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, that is 3, 6, 9, 9 plus 4, 13. Skill 3 is 2, 4, 6, 8, 8 plus 4, 12. So you already hit really low numbers, right? And this becomes the average number if you hit your condition. At 50% less HP, you gain coin power plus 1, making this a 16. Your skill 2, if target has 5 plus sinking potency, coin power plus 1, making this a 16. So if you hit your conditions, you are an average character, right? So this is pretty much the same of every 2 star character in the game. They usually start with some below average shit, and then after a while they become uh, average with their coin power. So clashing wise, this guy is just not it. Uh, being average is not very good in a game where some of the coins can go up to 20 something, right? So get that out of the way, coins talked about. Let's talk about the rest of his kit. Gain insight times 3%, times 6%, and times 12%. Just remember that most of the time you want to discard your skill 3 here. So is this good? Not really, because Rudion is 5, 10, and then 20% on her skills when they are discarded. So in terms of shielding, Rodion is way better and also generates aggro just by using a lot of her skill 2s and skill 3s. This guy only generates aggro on skill 2 and his guard skill and skill 3, which you want to discard most of the time, right? So a bit annoying uh, that this is how it works. So this discard thing is just not super tanky either. He's just a pretty decent bruisery type character, but he's not even a bruiser, he's a support. And now let's talk about his main mechanic, his sinking stuff, right? This guy, the main thing that he, he goes for is sinking. His skill 2 is apply sinking potency equal to insight. 
His skill tree is inflict plus three sinking count, which is minus one when you consider this a four coin move. And then his passive is when he is attacked, inflict one sinking on the attacker. And when you attack while shielded, you inflict one additional sinking on the attacker. And it's a very easy passive because you only need three sloth. Sloth is very common. This is to a total of eight sinking whenever you're attacked while shielded, right? Because apply one, apply one. So that's two per attack, two times eight, two times four is eight. Yeah. So it's okay in terms of potency application, but potency is not a big deal in the sinking gang because of Rhyme Sharing Rodion. If we were to look at the possible team comp for the sinking gang and how much potency they already apply, it's going to be Sun Shao Yisang who applies 246 on his skill 2 and quite a bit of count on his skill 1 and 3. It makes it so that it's not super negative. The super negative one is of course his skill 3 which nukes all of the sinking and his skill 2 which consumes 3 of the sinking. Right? And then we got Mola Ishmael who applies sinking count 2 and then we got 6 sinking potency and then we got 5 count 3 3 so 6 potency uh, 6 sinking potency on the skill 3 and then we got the big old rhyme shank which corroded will give you 10 sinking count and 10 sinking potency and then she also has what a potency on skill 2 as well as count on your skill 3 so with all that in mind right you actually don't really care about your potency too much because you are naturally going to get quite a lot of it as long as the turns keep going. You can do a lot of Corroded Ram Shang, which gives you 10, 20, 30 potency really, really fast. And yeah, like there's a lot of other sources of potency. If you go to the Mirror Dungeon, you literally get one Midwinter Nightmare, the Ego Gift, and you're good to go. You pretty much just generate sinking like crazy. So potency is not a problem. It's always count. And this guy is just negative sinking count everywhere. Negative two sinking count here, negative three sinking count here, and negative one sinking count here. And the only way that he cannot consume count is by guarding. That's the only way. Then he will actually be able to apply potency and not consume the count. So he is very negative on his counts. When compared to Sun Shower, Sun Shower will nuke all of it for massive damage. Or use skill one, which is negative one, or skill two, which is negative three. Negative one, negative three, I can totally handle that with Rhyme Shang and my Molar. They will apply enough count. But this guy is a bit too much if I were to use any of his skills here. Uh, although to be fair, I am discarding skill 3, right? So most of the time it's going to be minus 3 and going to be minus 2. Which is still a bit annoying when you consider like the actual Spice Bushi Sun. Uh, the only satisfactory thing I like about this guy is his support passive. His support passive is when one ally with the highest speed discards a skill, he gains 5 times discarded skill rank percent of the max HP. This is very good for solo runs or low team com runs because there are a few characters that can discard and they can get a shield. Uh, Honglu, Dichi Honglu that just got released. We got Mola Otis who can enjoy this and we also got Dichi uh, Rodion who can also enjoy this. So if you want to do any of those solos and they generate quite a bit of sloth so you can actually get this pretty easily then you will be able to get a thick shield on yourself quite a bit. It was stacked with Rodion shield it will give Mola Otis some tanking power and it will give your Dichi Honglu more tanking power as well. So generally a decent support passive. But everything else besides that makes it so that I will never run this character over Spice Bush. So I think this guy is a skip. Real easy skip in my opinion because we have Spice Bush. And if you don't have Spice Bush, you might consider um, not getting him still. Why? Because the actual sinking comp that I'm using right now and functions perfectly fine is Dichi, uh, Honglu, and Rodion, and then Spice Bush Yisang, and then Mola Ishmael. If you want to remove Spice Bush, that's actually fine. You just slap other characters that have good clashing power instead. Because with your Rodion and your Ishmael, you should be able to maintain your sinking count pretty well. So, not really too worried about consuming that. Like, anything is really better than someone that clashes low and only provides thinking potency because you can just satisfy that yourself, right? So yeah, Yisung is just kind of donkey in my opinion, right? So let's move on to Hong Lu, who is the opposite spectrum. He is ridiculous because like I said, that's the discard mechanic to maintain your inside level 3. So that is just really, really good shit. So let's assume that everything here is going to be at 3, right? Let's look at the first skill here. You discard one skill of the highest rank in all of these unit skill slots. So if you want, you can just use this 
to prepare yourself, use your skill one to discard your skill three, and then you just keep using the discard tech to maintain your inside tree. So clash power plus three minus one makes it a 12. Five plus five plus two, that's gonna be 12. And then your hit hit, inflict one sinking count, and on use, reuse the coin inside minus one times. So three minus one, you use this twice. So that makes this a five, five, 10, then 15 because you reuse, and then 20 because you reuse. So this is the first character, I think, that does a 20 on his skill one, as long as you can get the reuse coin. So skill one, very, very powerful already, right? We hit 20, just try not to clash with it. Cause even with the clash power, it's still pretty bad. It's like a 12 only. It's still not going to be like a 20 clash or anything like that. But thankfully, uh, you do have like DC Rodion to draw aggro. And besides that, he also has skill two and skill three, which happen to be 20s for clashing. So four, eight, 12, 16, 16. Coin power plus three minus one, two. So 6, 12, 18, 22. We got 22 on your skill 2. And you inflict 4 sinking. And you also randomly discard 2 skills. But that part I don't really care. Because remember discard tech. We just discard skill 3 one time. We're good to go. So pretty much you will do a 22 on your skill 2. So boom. You got yourself already a better clasher than your skill 1. Skill 1, one-sided. Skill 2, clash. What about skill 3? Skill 3 is going to be... 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. So 3, 6, 9, 9 plus 5, 14. Oh, that kind of sucks, right? But look at this one. At 2 plus insight, coin power plus insight. It's not minus 1. It's plus. There is a bit of weirdness here, right? Because this insight here is brown and this insight is not. But I'm pretty sure that's just a uh, tax error again. So people won't give me my 300 lunacy, please. Right, so coin power plus 3. So that means it's going to be 6, 12, 18, 18 plus 5, 23. And you do 3% more damage per sinking on the target. This is 3%, meaning you need 10 sinking on the target, which Rhymeshank corroded perfectly gives you. And if that is not enough, you just, you know, use Midwinter one time with your skill 1 or something like that. And then boom, you will have 9 sinking on the target. So yeah, it's really easy to hit this. It's 3% per sinking. So you get fat damage here. You get fat 23 coin power here. And on hit, inflict plus 4 sinking count and you only use 3 of the coins which means that it is a plus 1 sinking count and if the target is staggered or defeated you heal 10 SP I don't know why this was added this skill 3 here right is kind of bonkers and just reminds me of W Ryoshu without the requirement of charge it just hits super hard of course it's not like you know 31 or anything like that but it's still a respectably high 23 with additional damage output from your sinking and then you just have a lot of extra shit here that just makes it even crazier. So this move here is bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. So let's cover everything again. 20 one-sided with 3 inside. 22 uh, for clashing and for uh, damage as long as you have 3 inside. And then skill 3. 3 is 23. And you get more damage if you have sinking. And it's plus 1 sinking count. And gives you 10 SP if you stagger or defeat someone. With your insight at 3. So, insight 3, very important. Discard tech, very broken, right? So make sure you abuse this while it's still here. I do not know how they're going to fix discard tech because if you don't know the story, right? In season one, discard was used to cycle through the deck faster because you could actually use the guard skill to delete one skill, right? So you could do that to cycle through. Then they remove that. So now we have to play like normal. And now because we play like normal, this actually works in our favor because you can't remove the guard skill. So now you kind of have the weird wonkiness where the meta for this guy is not discarding. So you discard one time and then you just don't discard for the rest of the game. It's pretty interesting that discard mechanics have come all this way. At first it was just cycling and then now it's just don't cycle anymore because we're good. We have inside tree. So I think that is really, really funny. And uh, this character is just bonkers. 20, 22, 23, crazy. Defense skill, use it as a Gloom Generator and to cycle your cards. And then the passive is 3 Gloom Resonance. When discarding a skill, gain damage up equal to the discarded skill rank, max 3 per turn. Uh, the 3 Gloom Resonance is a bit tricky but not super tricky because Rodion can generate quite a bit of it. Ishmael can use Snag Harpoon as an Eagle. And Honglu himself has a Guard skill and a skill too that both give him Gloom. So if you wanted to run a smaller team comp, you can totally 
uh, get it yourself or you can run other characters that can provide a bit of syncing like maybe a reindeer Ishmael for example because reindeer Ishmael is also a syncing applier and provides gloom uh, and uh, I don't really know who else basically but of course if you do reindeer Ishmael you remove Mola Ishmael which is a bit tricky yeah but you can get this you just need to actually use your brain and think about it sometimes uh, you can I don't know what Mariachi does Mariachi have gloom maybe he does then you could use Mariachi or something like that I don't know uh, but yeah, uh, tree resonance just makes it a little bit tricky to proc. So do keep in mind about this thing when you are playing the game. And then when you discard a skill, you gain damage up equal to discard a skill rank, okay? And then when other allies discard a skill, blah 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 blah, doesn't matter because we have to discard tech. And then for your support passive, after attack, if the target is in a staggered or defeated state by an attack from one ally with the least SP, the ally heals 7 SP. Really strong for egos. Your ego, you will consume your SP before you attack. But then after you attack, you'll be able to get your SP. At least I'm pretty sure that's what the wording means. Because when you when you ego clash, right, you clash first. And then after you clash, you will consume some of the SP to use the ego. And then after you use that ego, I'm assuming that is the attack. And then you will heal SP when the target is staggered or defeated. So I'm pretty sure that's how it works and makes it so that this move here is just generically very, very strong. If you ever need SP generation, no matter what, this is like the most generic statement. It's literally, if you stagger someone or defeat someone, you'll be able to heal SP. So if you needed some SP boosting on some characters, like let's say you do like what, um, your Ning Claire solo. Ning Claire consumes a crap ton of SP and will corrode like crazy. And if you don't want him to corrode like crazy, to maintain him at a specific SP level, just slap this on him. Boom, you got it. Right? So there's a lot of versatility in this passive and it's just a really strong Honglu passive. It's another really strong Honglu passive. It's crazy. Yep. So, this character, 20, 22, 23, strong passive, uh, okay, regular passive. Uh, you just need to hit the resonance and then you need to discard. But like I said, you won't be discarding that much because of the tech, which might get removed in the future. I don't really know how this is going to happen, but they got to remove that tech. Otherwise, this Honglu is kind of crazy. Right, so with that tech in mind, this Honglu instant get for me. I immediately went to spark him. I'm going to build him up and I'm going to run him in my sinking gang which is going to be Yisang, Ishmael, uh, Dichi, and Dichi. For the Dichi Yisang, I recommend skipping just because I don't think it's going to be very, very useful. Yep. Uh, if you wanted just the supporting power of your Dichi Yisang, like the one that he discards his highest and then Dichi Honglun will benefit, I just tell you, go and give this guy two actions. If you give him two actions, he just discards his skill tree at some point and then you pretty much have your inside tree. So give this guy more actions and he can do it himself. So it's not really too much of a problem in that regard. So I think that, yeah, Honglu is functional already by himself. Don't really need a support for him right now. Uh, maybe in the future, they'll add more Dichis and that will be more relevant. But for now, I think that Yisang is just no place in this team comp at all. So just do this, 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 right. So that is it for this video. Hopefully this gave you some insight haha, on the character and whether to pull him or not. I immediately went to do it, so that is my uh, recommendation. Uh, besides that, I want to mention that this character is an infinite character, so there is actually no rush. If you want to go and spark your Season 3 characters like these guys here, feel free to go and spark them first. I haven't uh, sparked them yet because I am going to pull on the Ahab banner uh, because I'm running a bit low on my shards and I'm not willing to go and grind. So I'm probably going to dump a bunch of Lunacy on Ahab and hope I get them. Otherwise, I'll just slowly go and grind all of them before the season ends. Yeah. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. And remember to leave your comments if I made a mistake or whatever and blah, 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 all the usual stuff. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.